Welcome to Five Formations. It's myself, Culture Cams, joined by Rio Fernand, of course. And this is a tactical breakdown of the Barcelona 3-1 versus Manchester United, in which I still think you have nightmares about that one, Rio. Yeah, yeah. I've had to watch the goals back and stuff. Like that. It's <laughs> hurt me, it's hurt me. But obviously, the Champions League is coming up now, yeah. so it's only right that we kind of look at a game like this. And shout out Secret Scout as well uh, for providing us with the board. But listen, we just look back at the goals. I mean, I can see how your, your mood has dropped. I mean, he was, he was buzzing before, we, <laughs> but before this camera started rolling. Let's get, let's get into the lineups first. Let's get into the lineups. Because I think there was a bit of a... You kind of had an issue with how you're setting up. But let's talk about the Barcelona team. You've got Dani Alves. Crazy player. Best right, best right back of our generation. Possibly best right back of all time, in my eyes. Mm -hmm. um, I just voted him into the best Champions League ever team. I agree with that. Um, he patrolled this area again like it was his. His connection um, with Messi... Mm -hmm. And Dan, uh, David Villa was mm -hmm. phenomenal. That, that if he'd come in here, the rotations that they would do, he would sometimes be inside the pitch. Messi mm -hmm. would come out and just provide that 2v1, sometimes 3v2, 3v1 yeah. positions out there. He was a magical player. Um, and very, very, um, at the time, I thought underrated sometimes at the time. Mm -hmm. The two centre-backs speaks for himself. Yeah. Mascarano and Pique at the time were, were formidable. Oh. And... In the way that, that Pep Guardiola wanted to play, mm -hmm. it was the first time really that we've seen a, a, a small. He's under. He's like five ten, yeah, five yeah, nine, yeah, yeah. Yeah. playing centre back, but doing it with such elite, elite mm -hmm. um, uh, output. Um, cool, calm, and clear. I think PK gets forget forgotten when we talk about great centre halves of this mm. generation. He I was think a, he. Sometimes no, no, no. you can get at PK. You know, no, you know no, what no. I mean. I feel like when you say sometimes you can get mm. get him when. Man, I mean, you know, sometimes systems can no, protect, tell, tell me, protect tell, centre-halves, no, no, you know he, what I'm saying? He, he, he was fundamental, yeah. and I've spoken to Pep about this, he was fundamental, because if you were talking about centre-backs you were going to buy for Barcelona when he went there, he wouldn't have been on the list. No. But he was fundamental that in starting all of their attacks, mm. in the ball being, to, he, he would take the ball under any type of pressure, yeah. more than most. He'd take it like a midfielder, he'd take up and absorb pressure, bring teams on and then pop behind them. Mm. He was so he was so fundamental. Forget defending, but even with the ball. Yeah. Um, yeah. Abidal playing left back. I mean, he had had issues with um, his health and everything going. Yeah. So the emotional kind of pressure that he was under for this was and to perform the way it was was tremendous. Um, but the three in midfield, the they three. need no introductions. Busquets. Uh, Chavi and Iniesta, Chavi, the best. If you were talking about the top five or six players in the world at this time, those three are comfortably in there for mm -hmm. me, alongside Messi, Ronaldo, yeah. easily. I mean, talk about them a, a, a little bit more, because this is the core mm. of also Spain's dominance as well. Mm. Busquets, Xavi, Iniesta, what, they what? did things without Messi. Yeah. So imagine when they have... They do have Messi. It's like it's, it's absolutely ridiculous. What was great about them? Let me just put take some of our players out and just put them here. What was so great about them is that they never, ever, ever, ever played in a line like this. Mm. Never. So they were so difficult to get triangles. against. So they would be here and yeah, triangles. You hit them out on the head. The options that these guys had at all times, with with a Messi dropping in. <laughs> You have to realise that we had like Rooney there, we had Carrick and, and uh, Giggs here. We had, they, they had they, they had so many options on the ball. Mm -hmm. If if if, they, if it was too tight, he'd just go long. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he'd come in there, then he's gone there. All of a sudden, there's another one there, mm. and that's all it was. By the way, no one ever against me and Vida hardly. That any time they got a chance or any problems for us, it was always runners, mm. runners, and we weren't attached to anybody. Centre backs. Normally, I want to be against someone. I can see him. I can yeah. feel him. In this game, never happened. It was just a nightmare in that sense. So you've got like Alves, you've got Abidal there. Then you've got the two, four, the, 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 the three midfielders. Mm -hmm. You've got these two wide men, and these two wide men. They pin. They pin you. They back. pin you they back. Stay There's high. Messi, and that's what the great thing about this Pep team here. That, that these lot, these two, sacrifice a lot of their game. They want to get involved, get mm -hmm. in around here, and score goals. That will come. But first and foremost, you must, as their wide players, mm -hmm. pen us back. When them two stay there like that, that high, mm -hmm. us two centre backs have got no one to mark, <laughs> but we have to drop a little bit. Yeah. Because that ball, because all of a sudden, if the ball comes in here 
and they turn and they're going to run in there like that. I have to be able to to react. Yeah. So I can't. We 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 can't get you. You've got to be brave, and that's probably the biggest criticism of our team in this game. We probably wasn't brave enough, mm -hmm. and tactically understanding of this because this is not the normal way we play mm -hmm. to be able to press enough. Mm -hmm. to really affect the game. So we were penned back for most of the game. That's why possession stats and the beating they gave us, yeah. it probably stemmed from that as well. We were penned back here. And when you're penned back here, it creates so many gaps mm -hmm. in here, in here. And for the goal, one of the, the goal that, that Xavi sets up um, David Villa for, yeah. he gets in here behind like this. Yeah. And it'll, because they've got the ball with these areas here, mm -hmm. all of a sudden, look at our midfield. Our midfield's disjointed. Yeah. One pass. It's over and now... They're back. They're, they're at our mm -hmm. our back four, and then it's about decision making and, and David Villa, man. I, one one more thing I would say: this player here was one of the most important players in their team mm. at this in this time in this period. Pedro, Pedro. why? Because when they pressed, he was the main trigger. Mm. As, if you watch the way they pressed, as great as they were with the ball and they dominated with the ball, the way that he pressed and he was always a start. Bang! Mm -hmm. Once he went, they all flew in behind, flooded, and win the ball. <laughs> It was crazy, but once he got here, it was all about decision making on mm -hmm. the man on the ball. Do we go out? When do we go out? We mm -hmm. closed up. Yep, we closed up. But then the pass and the timing of that there. Could ever have maybe. Ever done could a have bit maybe better. been inside, maybe a little bit more, a bit, yeah. a bit a bit earlier, and been in there. But I look at the, from a def yeah, I say that from a defensive mm. standpoint. Yes, that could have been where Patrice might have come in earlier and been there quicker. But it's about also the brilliance of exploiting that. Yeah. Timing, then the class of the finish. He sends Edwin the wrong way. It's a great finish. And then we're, we're up against it. But then, it's crazy. I know you're going to go on to it. But then, then, then all of a sudden, before half time, probably the 10 minutes around just before half time, we started getting back in the game. Yeah. And then we end up scoring. Yeah, Wayne Rooney with a nice goal. But this is a rematch of the 2009 mm. Champions League final. Why do you think no lessons were kind of learned? In a way, should I say? Because in the 2009 final, Ronaldo, you mm. know, United went, um, United lost that game as well. Barcelona dominated. First mm. 20 minutes, I'll say United were, were mm. up for it. Then the game eventually, Iniesta, Xavi started getting on the ball. Messi gets mm. on the ball. The yes, there was difference with Pedro and Villa to Henri and Eto, mm. but it's pretty much the same setup. You know, Pep done the same thing pretty much in the both games. Why do you think United and Sir Alex Ferguson maybe didn't? do something kind of different to to counter this because it was even worse in my opinion than the, the 2 was worse than Rome. Exactly. But Why it, do you it, think this was? Because I, I don't know but I just feel that we I, I actually voiced my opinion I was I, I was this played the way that's got us here and won us all these titles. Mm. In the biggest games against the best teams we didn't go out and play expansive mad football. Mm. We were very very good at Sitting in a in a mid block probably mm. here like this, and we'd play free in there like that and be hard to play against. Forget them at the mm -hmm. moment for right now, and we'd be really hard to play against. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then we'd go one two like that, free, mm -hmm. like this, and we, these guys would be would be a resolute mm -hmm. dogs hard, but once we won the ball, we were we were the Lighting best quick. the best at doing that. Yeah, that. One maybe join. Mm. We were the best at that, yeah. And we went away from that in the biggest game of the season twice. Mm. And that's where I was baffled, and I, I could, I, I wasn't for playing a different way. The the Rome game, mm. if we converted the chances in the first ten minutes, yeah. maybe it's a different game. And you go, I, I see why the manager had played like that because mm. the chances they they were there, mm -hmm. and we won the ball early, and then we almost punished them. Mm. But then, like the manager said after the game, he felt he maybe should have changed it. And we just didn't on that day. And it just it's just one of those things. It, it, we played into their hands. I think when you go and try and pickpocket a team, yeah. the best club team to ever play, mm -hmm. when you go and try and pickpocket them high up the pitch, Pep Guardiola, Guardiola and his team are hoping and praying. Mm -hmm. That was my point. I think they hope and pray mm -hmm. that you come up the pitch <laughs> and you try to nick the ball yeah, here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because they say n nine times out of ten we'll get out. Yeah, they and trust they're, themselves. Yeah, and when we get out... We know we've got killers mm. in these areas and one joining. We'll have the one, we'll have the one sitting. Mm -hmm. But once we win it in this area, once we get through your press, mm -hmm. we know that you come up the pitch and you're up against us and mm -hmm. you're aggressive. But once we win the ball here, 
we know we know that all of a sudden options become available. Yeah. There's another one. He might go in there. He might play away. He's got options on the ball there. Yeah. Triangles. Look at the triangles everywhere. Look there. The triangles. Yeah. So I know, and They're I press felt, resistant. They're press yeah, resistant. and I thought that they always felt that if if we get the ball and we get through mm -hmm. the press, we've got too many options to hurt and kill you. And mm -hmm. I just thought that we played into their hands in that respect. Yeah. And I mean, I, I've always wondered. I mean, Fergie said it himself. Maybe if he assigned Park to Messi, it could have been potentially different. I know that sounds kind of funny, like how can you assign mm. Park to Messi? But that is what Park was kind it, of in the team for. But I get that. When you've yeah. got Giggs no, I get that. Carrick, Giggs at 38 years old in the midfield yeah, against that. Xavi, Iniesta and Busquets legs. without any real support no of legs. Park. No you're legs. Gonna, you're going to suffer, man. But I, I, I'll go back to that point. He was playing up. He was playing up, yeah. And you say that you're going to play like that. If 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 Park comes in mm -hmm. and does play, he's got the centre midfielder there. And you play, you know, you know, you know what Messi is. Messi here is Messi. Yeah. There's Carrick, Giggs, yeah. And he said, if we said that we're going to man mark, yeah, mm -hmm. with Alves would have been up. If we said we we're going to man mark him, this guy Messi is an alien. <laughs> he, he, he was already being elusive and unmarkable for us two. So we were basically playing with two men down mm. at this point. And then you might man mark him with Jason Park. He's going to go and stand over here. Mm. Now you're three men out. <laughs> we're three men down. Yeah. They've got bodies everywhere in yeah. here. Do you know what I mean? And it's like, I don't, I don't think even man marking Messi would have helped us in yeah. this game. I just feel that maybe our, 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 going back to our shape that we were used to playing and we all understood completely. We wasn't, the fundamentals are that we weren't a pressing team by nature. Mm. We would beat and our bet, we had the better players and we were a better team than all the old average teams. The best teams in this era we had to fight with. We had to win the fight and mm. rely on our front three being able to get us the three points or the wins. And because of the speed of our transitions, we were the best at transition when we won the ball and we turned the defence into attack very quickly and we put them under pressure in that sense. When you've got a team like this, man marking Messi, mate, he'd, he'd, he'd be happily go and stand there mm. and say, come with me. And then all of a sudden the game would develop and Iniesta would get the ball behind our midfield at some point and then all of a sudden, bang, yeah. it's the, diff then the, the difference. G would be with him, don't get me wrong, he'd be yeah. with him. But there are going to be one or two good times in that game when he gets the wrong side of him, then it's the curtains. Talking about Messi, because this felt like the Messi final in terms of, I think it was even Graham Sooners at that point in 2011 said, that is the best player ever. Mm. When you were playing against him, did you feel that? I know you're Ronaldo's boy and all of that. I know mm. that. But when you were playing against him, where did you feel like you're playing yeah, against in, the best player in, ever? In terms of playing against a player... There's been two players in my career that I've played against and I've gone, there's levels to this. Mm. Ronaldo, the Brazilian Ronaldo, mm -hmm. and Messi. And Messi just, he took, he took your best attributes away <laughs> with the way that he played. Yeah. That's the best way I can say it. And then one, and because he's playing away from me, and just take everyone off the pitch, right, and just look at it like this. Yeah. When he's playing like this and he's playing away, He's playing in midfield with his, with his partners in crime, Iniesta, Busquets, etc., creating that little diamond and that four, four ball in there. Really, I want to be playing. That's their striker. I want him here and I want to be against him. I'll be 1v1 mm. getting against him and doing that. He's not allowing me to do that. So all of a sudden, me and the manual are looking at each other and going, we're not even part of the game. We're not even affecting it. Mm. We're, he's sapping the confidence out of us without even going past us. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, he gets it and he comes alive here. And he's asking you, can you come out with me? Mm -hmm. And the moment you do that, these guys are running in here. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And he, he just creates so many problems for you when he's not even really physically against you. And he's asking you so many questions and it's very difficult. And it's all down to communication. Was, if you communicate right, you've got a chance. There was a moment where actually around the halfway line, Messi gets the ball, like around this area. And I think Vidic decides, do you know what? This is going to be the time I press mm. him and just Good night. Not, not makes him, Good night. leaves him on the floor. And, and all of a sudden, and that's what I'm he's saying. against you and the centre-backs. Centre-backs, really. Centre-backs normally, and even in today's game, mm. 
don't really want to be there. That's why you have to respect what Liverpool do. Yeah. With with Van Dijk, Matip, Konate, Gomez, etc. They're happy to play there, but they're not playing against Messi every week. No. Nope. This is against Messi. This is the best player in the world. So it's different. So you've got to back yourself, yeah. But your team's got to be set up to do that. Mm-hmm. You can go tight like that on there when there's a lot of pressure on the ball and the person on the ball's head is down. So they can't mm-hmm. look to play passes there because they haven't got the time and the space. If the person there on the ball and there's someone right in front of them, I can afford to go there because I know that that ball's not really going to come. It's going to be a lump ball. It's not going to be mm-hmm. a perfect precision ball. So then I can go tight. But once the ball goes into his feet, you are now at the mercy of Mr. Lionel Messi. Yeah. And that's the problem. And, and even at times, I, he got me 1v1 at times on the edge of the box in here. Luckily, I got a bit lucky or I dealt with it a couple of times. But that's all through overloads elsewhere. And all of a sudden he goes, bang, gets you 1v1. There's not often that you get left 1v1 like that. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Because you can normally cater for that. But this team, they pose so many threats and they pose so many question marks for your team. Yeah. They were in the midst of a battle. It's very hard to unpick it. Yeah. And it was impossible. And talking about, with, with the goal, a goal kind of came in a similar way. Uh, Messi scored to make it 2-1, which, in, in my opinion, I think Van der Sar could have saved it. I don't, <laughs> I don't know how you feel about it, but I think Van der Sar could have saved it. Mm. Um, they had the ball kind of like in a straight line, kind of like this, right? And Messi was just here. And they had somebody up here occupying the David fullback. Villa. That was David Villa. Occupying the three players right here. What's that right? though? What's that again? What's that? A rotation. Yeah. Isn't it? Because normally it's there. Yeah. David Villa there. All of a sudden he comes in there like that, David Villa. Mm-hmm. Boom. Bang like that. And you've got the best player in the world. Free. Literally. Free. There's not a player next to him. Mm. The ball comes over to him. Ball comes over to him here. And he's got the freedom of, of Wembley. Goes off and bangs it in. Mm. I think it could have been saved, but it just shows again how, as you mentioned, the rotations, the way Messi's thinking, the movement, seeing and actually understanding the spaces, Mm. where to go. Because I think that's something that, obviously, when you talk about great players, you talk about them on the ball. But I think, as you mentioned, Messi was so intelligent as well. This team was so intelligent to identify where spaces Mm. were. And disciplined. Yeah. Because, for instance, and he's doing that, he's taking Patrice or Vida, Vida, I, getting them and saying, right, you're with me, locking you down mm. for him to go there. Vida's saying to Pat probably, right, well, I'm, don't leave me 1v1. Mm. Yeah. Do you think he should have so maybe trusted so you you trust himself, out. though? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you can. Point, but what I'm one, saying, defend, one attacker was occupying yourself, Vidic and Evra. One. Yeah, you've got to release. You've yeah. got to go. But it's about, the, the, it's about seeing it in the moment. Mm. We can watch the video and go, he should have gone. But when you're in the moment, it's very difficult to do that. And that's where it separates in the moment the elite players from the good players or the or, or top players, but or not so good. So yeah. this decision making these times. But once again, it goes back to our point again. You know young kids that you should be playing as a number nine or number ten, the ball's here, all get dragged to the ball. Mm. Or on the side of the ball. He's going and thinking, where's a space away from the ball where the people can't get at me? Mm. I'm not gonna go into traffic. I'm gonna, I want to go out where there's no one. And that's what, again, that's the patience and discipline of someone like Messi. Comes in, all of a sudden then does his damage. Yeah. And it's a great goal. I mean, you've mentioned it before. This the best club team ever. Yeah, easily. Seen. Easily. Easily. They dominated with the ball. They can dominate you without the ball. They press you. Like I said, Pedro was the catalyst for all their pressing. Mm. They were just a phenomenal football team. Um, and they were the first team that I played against that had pure rotations and they all understood it. And it was just like, it was a puzzle that, you know, when you've got a puzzle and you just can't find that mm. piece yeah. to try and get you going again. Yeah. This was it. To think you could have been a three-time Champions League winner. I know. I you didn't, if you didn't run into this team, because yeah. even in 2009, Chelsea, I mean, people talk about the refereeing decisions. Mm. It could have been a, a repeat, Chelsea United again. And I would have fancied us, us to, yeah. to, to do that. And then you ran into them again in 2011. How's your luck? You, my luck. How's our luck? Oh, like, yeah. How's our luck? Like, like... To run into the best team ever twice in the Champions League final, I just think is so, And so our team, unlucky, man. you people have to understand as well, like, we can look at the teams today, yeah? Yeah. Like, I don't know, like the English teams today, like um, Chelsea mm. and Liverpool won the Champions League recently. Chelsea 
and Gerard when they beat beat Milan. Yeah. All those teams, them English teams, they didn't win the league. Yeah, when they won the Champions yeah, League. Yeah, even in 2012. Like, as this well. team that we, we when we won the league mm-hmm. in 2008 and then we got these five, we were winning the league back to backs. Doubles. We were winning the leagues. Three peaks. That's so what I say. Chill out with it, the it Liverpool. Sh- it talk, shows you that the the how good this team was. Mm. But then, how good the Barcelona team must have been yeah. to batter us. Yeah. It wasn't. They didn't just beat us; they battered us. So, for me, easily the best team. Yeah, there it is, guys. That is the breakdown for the Barcelona three, Manchester United one Champions League final in 2011. Listen, this is the last time we're going to talk about a fixture like this. We've broken it down for you. That's it. Make sure you like. Make sure you share. Make sure you subscribe. And also send in some games that you might want to see us break down. We are out.